Hello, my friends. It is Thursday of Holy Week, which means it's Monday Thursday, a day about teaching when Jesus gathered the disciples together to teach them one last time. And the thing he decided to teach them was that they needed to love people and love and love and love and love some more. And that that's how people would know that they believed in him. And I think that's a really important lesson for all of us, particularly during these strange times of preventative distancing as we go into uh, the Easter weekend, not in the way we wanted to do it, certainly not in the way I wanted to do it. Uh, but here we are. And so I am so glad to be with you in this way. And for tonight and tomorrow night, we're going to have a two-part story because it's a very long, kind of strange story about a mouse and badger and some other creatures who are all having a feast together. And I thought it would be a good way to spend this Monday, Thursday, and tomorrow, Holy Friday, in stories uh, together. So Brian Jacques... The Great Red Wall Feast, illustrated by Christopher Denise. To Jade Pascal Jacques, from her grandfather. And for my parents. Now, as we start, it's important to know that this story is British. So some of the words might be a little strange to our American ears. So don't panic if the words are a little different. I'll tell you a story. You'll see it unfold. I can still recall it, though I'm old. Tis an ancient tale related in rhyme, which happened once upon a time. And they have all gathered around for story time. Once on a summer's day, in the golden long ago at the Abbey of Redwall, which some of you may know, lots of woodland creatures and all the Abbey mice were planning in secret a marvelous feast for their abbot. Now wasn't that nice. They bustled and hustled. They hurried and scurried, flittered and skittered and skipped. From woodland to larder, from orchard to cellar, Provisions were furtively shipped. Trundling, bundling, harrying, carrying, tugging and lugging in force, whilst good Father Abbot sat taking his nap. He didn't know of the feast, of course. Giggling, chuckling, whispering low, smuggling, huddling, creatures would go with stifled laughter and twinkling eyes. Now wasn't their abbot in for a surprise? There's the abbot having a nice little sleep. And there they are, giggling and planning. Come! Follow your nose down into the kitchen. There's fat Friar Hugo in charge of it all. Boiling, bubbling, busily simmering. Herbs and dried roots hang thick from each wall. Chop up the chestnuts. Add some more apples. Pass me those damsons and that meadow cream. His high squeaky voice rises up to the rafters mid lovely aromas and wispy white Steam. There's, there he is. Breads and cheeses, nuts and salads, soups and pastries, pies and flans, tarts and trifles, cakes and puddings, ovens, cauldrons, pots and pans. 
stews and sauces, jams and junkets, candied fruits and honey sweets, baking, basting, cooking, cooling, festive fare, and banquet treats. All the animals helping out. Hark, stop and be still. Is the old abbot waking? His paws a twitching. He snuffles a mite, whispers Constance the badger, good mother of Redwall. We should have done all this preparing last night. Matthias the warrior peeps at the sleeper Oh dear, if he awakens, then what shall we do? Cornflower, his wife, thinks up a solution. Take him for a stroll in the woodland with you. I know Father Abbot is so fond of walking. Why, earlier this morn, ere he sat down to rest, I heard him and Formol, they were both talking, of going to Mossflower Wood on a quest. Here's the badger. Anamosi. Oh, Without any warning, the abbot stands upright. Yawning and blinking, he gives a great smile. With a nod to the trio, he bids them good morning, saying, I've not been out on a stroll for a while. And listen, friends, this may sound odd. I quest for a Bobbiton weary nod. Bobbiton weary nod. That will be very important. If you'll agree to accompany me, we'll see what we shall see. A Bobbiton weary nod. And there's the abbot. All through the great abbey stand helpers a-watching, murmuring low like breeze in long grass. Our abbot must go. Hush, don't let him know. Not a peep or a sound. Stand aside, let him pass. Away across the grounds in sun-dewed morn go Constance, Matthias, the abbot too. When up Pops formal from out of the lawn. Good morning, Sir Abbot. I'm coming with you. A squirrel sentry named Noisy Sam after the friends have gone, from high on the wall roars out to all, all clear back to work, everyone. Pushing and pulling, heaving and weaving, ducking and dodging, busying round, mixing and molding, kneading and pawing, lifting, shifting as tasks are found. Here, good Ambrose Spike, a stout cellar master, to his hedgehogs working like peas in a pod. Stir those quills, we'll have to toil faster. Hemp! Quest for a Bobbiton weary nod. It must be his age. Seasons bless the old fellow. He'll forget that he's abbot before very long. His paws are a dither, his mind has gone mellow. To work hogs, let's strike up our song. There's Noisy Sam. And this is Ambrose Spike. He's a hedgehog. Cask and barrel, keg and firkin, autumn cider laid in stock, rosehip syrup, strawberry cordial, dandelion, and old burdock. 
bang, bang, the copper's hammer, glug, glug, the flagon fills, fruit juice of every manner banishes all ills. So here are all the hedgehogs, and they've got barrels and barrels of different drinks. That's what all those words were. Drinks and cups and things to drink them in. Whilst out in the kitchen, there's much consternation. Oh, here a poor mole mother's gruff, anguished cry. Whoa, my little bungo, him only an infant, gone and falled into yon big tater pie. All around the huge basin, the moles and Friar Hugo, with long wooden paddles, they probe and they seek. As Bungo's young sister pipes up to their mother, he'll have eaten his way out of there by next week. Midst turnip and gravy, potato and beetroot, they scour and poke to the poor mole mum's cries. Whoa, can't you find nothing? A paw or a mole suit? Be they bits of beetroot or are they his eyes? When up strolls young Bungo, the sight of the season from tail tip to ears clad in damson and cream. Your mother, tis Bungo, I falled in a plum pie. Twere so delicious I didn't dare scream. So the mama mole, that's her, is also worried that her baby mole bungo has fallen into the giant pot of stew. But there he is. He fell into a pie and he ate his way out of the cream pie. Yonders the veteran, Basil stag hair. He and cornflower pick blossoms with care, harebell and honeydew, sweet columbine, to grace the tables at banquet time. Daisy and marigold, primrose and lily, they ramble on quite willy-nilly. Basil's convinced of the abbot's folly. To me, he says, a banquet sounds jolly. But a Bobbiton quest for a weary nod? What do you think? Sounds rather odd. Let's hope our abbot gets back all right, or he'll miss his very own feast tonight. Fragrant, blushing scarlet, lilac and pale gold, laden down with flowers all their paws can hold, past the tranquil orchard round the gable wall, a scented rainbow drifts into the Abbey's hall. So there's Basil. And he's out picking all kinds of flowers to make pretty decorations for the Abbot's feast. And there's Cornflower, the little tiny mouse. Through stained glass windows high in the great hall, Sunlight lances dustily down, painting islands of harlequin hues on floor stones, time-worn, brown. Three banquet tables are set open squared in snow-white linen arrayed. Such elegant grace, no spoon out of place, each plate correctly laid, enjoying the shade of a tapestried wall in the timeless, silent, ancient hall, they set down burdens, all labors cease to savor a moment of peace. And there are the abbeys, great stained glass windows. And they come in from picking all the flowers and they see that the table is beautiful and everything is perfect. And so they put down their work for a minute to take a deep breath and enjoy it all. 
Then Basil's long ears shoot up like twin spears. Do you hear that? Something's crunching beneath the flowers strewn on the floor. There comes a sound of munching. Carefully, cautiously, Cornflower stoops, stirs the blossoms, and peeps beneath. There lies Bungo, bolting the blooms, a marigold clenched in his teeth. He plucks it out and tugs his snout politely with roguish charm. This your salad you inspect tastes very nice. Thank you, ma'am. So Bungo, who fell in the pie, is now munching all of the flowers that Cornflower and Basil picked. And he thinks it's a salad. He's a little sassy. Green gold of leaf and sun. Sweet bird song on the air. Summertime in moss flower. Enchanting. Staff in paw. The abbot strides right well for one so old. In his wake, three comrades come a panting. The stumbling, bumbling trio share but a single thought. Bobbiton quest, weary nod, a journey all for naught. Listen to that nightingale. What a joyous song a chuckling abbot chides them. Keep up now, come along. Upon a fallen beech log, the followers sit a while. Bet you're tired and hungry, says the abbot with a smile. Nothing like a woodland stroll to whet one's appetite. You'll enjoy supper all the more when we return tonight. Oaks in quiet noontide, Serene as guardians stand, or four abbey dwellers in their forest land. High above the foliage, borne upon the breeze, redwall bells ring from afar out across the tree trees. So there they are. Abbot and badger and mole and mouse having a wonderful walk, hearing the bells of the abbey ring and getting all hungry for dinner while they're on this weird quest the abbot has for them. But disaster, calamity, down in the cellars, a barrel of dandelion fizz has just burst. With noisy Sam roaring, all paws to the rescue, they stampede the staircase to get down there first. Squirting and spurting, spraying and sputtering, a great oaken barrel like some savage beast gushes fizz high and wide as it spins a mad circle. Misfortune wails Ambrose, the day of the feast, skipping and sliding. Dodging the barrel, youngsters chase round with their mouths open wide. No sense in wasting, it's so lovely tasting, and dandelion fizz always tickles inside. Make way, stand aside for the skipper of otters. He's weathered all storms of river and stream with a bung and a mallet. The lithe, brawny creature bounds upward to bang, hang by his tail from a beam. When the barrel speeds by, skipper's sharp, roving eye, the left one, of course, or his right has a patch. Notes hole and position as down to his mission he swoops like a hawk, the bold fizzer, to catch. Down in the basement where they're doing all of the preparing, a big barrel of fuzzy soda has escaped and burst. And they're all in a panic. There they are. But the little ones think it's kind of fun. They should sip up all of that soda that has exploded all over. And there's Otter, who is gonna take his mallet and his bung, that's like a cork, 
and he's going to stop that barrel from exploding. Womp! Slatch! It's a bullseye. Well stopped, hear the crowd cry. One whack from the mallet, that bung is in tight. Ambrose Spike takes the floor, holding high Skipper's paw. Our friends save the day for the banquet tonight. Meanwhile, in Mossflower, our abbot announces, Back to the abbey, my friends, this Bobbiton quest is halfway done. At Redwall, the weary nod ends. Bewildered, but obedient, they retrace their way on the path they traveled earlier that day. Relieved, but very puzzled, Formal gives a groan. Question, Bobbiton and Nodden far away from home? Matthias silently agrees. They've been led, but where? Trudging around in woodland for a thing that isn't there? When a mouse grows older, his memory often slips, but never would the abbot hear that from Matthias's lips. Loyalty and affection for their aged friend, trusting him far beyond any journey's end. Faithful and unfailing, hoping to be home soon, they went along together through acres of afternoon. And there's the abbot. And his friends are worried that he might be forgetting things and that this whole quest doesn't make any sense because they think they're looking for something that's not there. But they start their journey home. Oh, there's Badger. And Formal. And there's Abbott leading the way. And that, my friends, is where we're going to have to wait for tonight. That's about half the story of figuring out what's happening. While all of the creatures of the Abbey are making this fabulous feast and they're trying to make it a surprise for the Abbot. And he's gone off on a quest with some friends for something they're not sure is there. So we're going to have to see what happens tomorrow. And we're going to have to wait because these are days of waiting and none of us are very good at it. But you don't have to wait to know the most important thing that I can ever, ever tell you, which is how amazing you are and how very much I love you.